Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are continuing our conversation with Tom McLarney. And uh, Tom is an anesthesiologist at UK, and he had one of those days back on August 19th, 2016, that nobody wants to have, but thankfully uh, he was at work at UK and uh, started having uh, a heart attack and was able to get great care and be taken care of. But during this time, God showed up in a powerful way in his life, even though he believed uh, he got to hear that audible voice, the Holy Spirit that we don't talk a lot about. He shared yesterday about the first time that the Holy Spirit spoke to him in the ICU when he was uh, clearly by himself. And uh, I loved uh, what Tom said that he said to you on that first day and if you don't mind just if i want people to go back and listen to the whole thing but just it was so powerful what god reminded you the holy spirit said to you that night in the icu tom that night i uh like we said i was alone there my my brother was the last one to leave we'd had family and friends in and it was quiet and the holy spirit came to me and literally pushed everything out of my head and said just as plain as you and i are talking tomorrow's not promised and I just had an explosion of emotion of that, of of joy and um, and thanksgiving, and um, I just exploded into tears and laughter all at the same time, and raised my hands up and said, "Message received, and thank you." I don't know about you, Tom, but I know uh, you and I talked about this before we went on the air today. Is that man? I do a lot of time, a lot of time uh, telling God what I need and what I want him to do of course you know that I want him to bless I have my long list but uh, not often that I just listen but uh, you were sharing with me through this experience that uh, you've been trying to receive messages more frequently I have and um, since that time that there there have been so many other other little instances where I see the Holy Spirit now but but like we were talking about, the a friend I, I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time last week, and told this whole story to him, and um, and he finally said, "Well, how, how has this changed you?" And I really had to think about it a minute because I've I've seen the Holy Spirit in, in so many ways, and He's changed my heart in so many ways that we'll talk about. But I think the biggest change is just what you alluded to, and that is, I used to wake up in the morning and I would tell god what i needed from him a creative being telling the creator of the universe and me what i needed from him and now when i start to pray and i don't do it every day and i'm not perfect at it but but what i'm trying to do more often is get up in the morning and say what do you want me to do and i'll do it yeah, it's a, it's a total mindset change, and, um, you know, uh, I love Psalm 46.10, Tom, I'm sure you know it. It says, simply be still and know that I am God. And uh, as I thought back over my 52 uh, years of life that uh, so many times when I've gone through crisis and things, it's I look back over now, I think maybe it's what God had to do was slow me down <laughs> because he had to get my attention. And it sounds like he had your undivided attention that night in the ICU. No doubt, no doubt, and even that night, I knew I knew there was more to it. And as I was starting to unpack it, I, I knew there was going to be more. And a couple of days later, I was out to breakfast with my son, and we were having some heavy stuff conversation and some light stuff conversation. And it had turned to one point we were talking about UK basketball and if De'Aaron Fox was going to be our point guard. That year or not, and we decide that can be light or heavy, you know. That's right. Well, you decide who the point guard is at Kentucky. That's that's exactly right. And and the Holy Spirit came to me right in the middle of that again, and pushed everything out again, and said, "What are you waiting for?" And it 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 really took me aback. It was clearly the Holy Spirit, but I had no idea what He was talking about. So. I thought, okay, it must be for Brandon, for my son. So completely out of context, I just blurted it out to him. I said, Brandon, what are you waiting for? And he gave me a look like, wow, when they shocked you, they might have they dinged you a little bit. <laughs> and so then I started scrambling in my mind. And is it I'm having a conversation with the Holy Spirit now. And 
Is it forgiveness I haven't given, forgiveness I haven't asked for, pray more, go to church more, give more, all of that. And, and, and that's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, it's all of that, but there's more. Mm-hmm. So I really started kind of grinding on that. And about a week later, I was in my men's group that your brother is a part of. Mm-hmm. And we were doing a study of mere Christianity and one of the late chapters is called counting the cost and it's really about god doesn't want the the tepid lukewarm easy stuff that we're happy to pass off he wants all of us the the good stuff the bad stuff the easy stuff the hard stuff he wants all of us and and that's what he said to me that night he said i want all of you so since that time, I've really been trying to live those three sentences, and it's it's changed me. And today, this this getting to the opportunity to to tell you a little bit of this story, I think this is part of that purpose. Oh, I have no doubt about it. Uh, I know so many people that have been moved by it, and I know we'll be continue to be blessed and moved by that and you know you talked about you know talking with your son that day and uh i was laughing over here shaking my head you know and thinking he's saying dad what is you know what, what's going on there but but the thing i love more though is that you were obedient you know because so many times god has said stuff to me and i'm like oh no you, you you're, I, I don't know if you, I, god i'm not really sure if you you know what not well, not right now. Okay, God, I know, but uh, I mean, you know, that took a lot of courage to do that for your son, and then it winds up it wasn't for him. But you still kept asking and pursuing, and uh, I hope as our listeners that you know, sometimes I've heard God wrong. Um, I remember when I had my supermarket up in Cynthia and a flood hit, and I went two million dollars in debt overnight, and I thought that uh, God told me to close on Sundays so I could be like Chick Fil A, you know, just open Monday through Saturday. Well, my dad was my advisor, uh, had a lot of wisdom. Well, he was actually uh, on a visit in the Holy Land, and so I just made the decision myself. It wasn't like today where you have international texting. This was back in the uh, late 90s. So I just made that decision. So he comes back a couple weeks later and uh, finds out I've closed on Sundays, and he's like, uh, son, uh, you know, I love your faith, but, uh, you know, you do know you owe $2 million, don't you, because of this flood. And I said, well, uh, you know, Dad, I just think God's uh, trusted me to do this. And, you know, unfortunately, a year later, we didn't make it. Or a few weeks later, I had to reopen because we couldn't pay our bills. And then a year later, I wound up having to file bankruptcy. Um, and yet, you know, I don't regret doing that. And I know there were people mocking me. Um, yet I tried to be obedient and so many times I haven't been obedient, but I've I found Tom and I want to ask you this from you and you know, we hadn't discussed any of this, but you know, when you try to be, be obedient with God, even if you miss him, if you're trying to seek him, I think he always honors that, you know, there's no doubt about it. And I've, that's been one of the blessings of since this time is the obedience and, and Tracy's helped me a lot with that. She got, she put the story out on Facebook and social media. I'm on that stuff, but I don't really do it. But she put it out there, and there have been there have been people that have told me how much and how meaningful that was. Just that. So it's easy to be obedient when you've got somebody that's willing to be obedient besides you, and. And, and see that as a gift. And and there has been an element of obedience about it, but it's 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 almost it's almost like you're he's God's put me in these situations now where I just don't see it as an option. It's just this is what I want you to do. So what what do you do when the creator of the universe is tapping on your your shoulder to say, I want you to do this. Uh, I just can't not do that. And um, and it's easy because he has surrounded me with people that have helped me to be obedient. Um, Greg and Michelle White were chairs of the heart ball, gave me an opportunity to um, give a talk there. 
that's them being obedient. And and it's just it, you just see the Holy Spirit working in other people and through you, and the Holy Spirit connecting. Uh, it's it, it just makes it easy to be obedient and and to be receptive. I, the the my heart attack happened on a Friday. I got to come home Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning. A dear dear friend of ours that you all all went to school with too. Um, had made a casserole just for me and came over and um, just kind of took over the morning and for us. And I don't normally, I don't like to be on the receiving end of blessing. I like to be the giver. But God even broke my heart of that mm. in a very, um, in a very powerful way that allows people to bless me but to be a blessing and that um that was not new for me but a new appreciation um seeing the holy spirit work and 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 i think i think that's the obedience part of it is watching that it's such a privilege mm. to to be a part of it, but to see it from the outside also, mm-hmm. uh, that once again, that's superhuman. That is not, that's given to me, not me. Well, as you say all that, you have tears in your eyes, and I just love that as, you know, you still experience the, the love of Jesus and how, you know, even in your early 50s that God is still transforming and working on us and doesn't give up on it. And as men, um, so many times I think, you know, we just think, uh, you know, if I can do one more thing, then maybe God will love me more. And yet you're just talking about, um, you know, just simple obedience and yet I know that the verse I used to really struggle with was that God prefers obedience over sacrifice. And for some reason, I don't know why I always had this mentality that it was more about sacrifice because Jesus sacrificed his one and only life. But uh, it's just simply kind of like what uh, Jesus told the disciples when they, he started the ministry, you know, just come follow me. And it sounds kind of that's what God's doing. Tom, just follow me, the Holy Spirit. And when you are obedient, it's, like it's a beautiful thing. It, it's... It is. It it it's transforming. It just changes your perspective and it helps you it helps you see God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus working in your life and in other people's lives, but with the body of Christ on earth. That's what the real church is. It's when you believe and then realize that you are an indispensable part of that plan uh, th- that's just a huge gift and one we don't deserve which just makes you all the more appreciative because we can't earn it but it's still mm-hmm. given uh it it's just it's staggering mm-hmm. but it's real and and it really is clear we all are an indispensable an indispensable part of God's plan for the body of Christ on earth and what a privilege that is and it makes you want to serve and be obedient mm. All right. Well, I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to have Tom, uh, one more program, continue to hear how God has worked in his life and how the Holy Spirit has been speaking to him. So I hope you'll ask a friend to join us tomorrow at 12.45 p.m. for Hope is Here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. 